So we've been talking about, on objective one here, looking at a sequence of numbers um, and seeing what their finite differences were. So what that meant was you're checking to see how much each one of those terms is going up by. And you keep doing that until you find something that's constant, until they stop going up by uh, a different amount each time. So here it is on exercise four where we're trying to apply that. So the first seven triangular pyramid numbers it's tough to say, are shown below. Find a, poly, a polynomial function that gives the nth triangular pyramidal number. This is another example of a figure it number. Okay, so let's call up this pin here and let's first find the finite differences. So on the finite differences going up by plus 3 next one because it's 4 minus 1 and then 10 minus 6 I'm going up by 6 10 minus 4 equals 6 and then I'm going up by 10 by 15 by um, what is that 21 21 sure and then how about um, 20 8, 28, that's what that looks like. Okay, uh, this means since these things are not the same, it is not linear. Okay, so now uh, let me change colors here, make this nice full color. Now let's see what the differences between those differences are. So this goes up by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, and by 7. Since those aren't the same, this means it's not quadratic. Not quad. Hey, I see that my linear thing disappeared there. That's whatever. Okay, so uh, keep going. Keep going. Let's find the differences between those differences. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, and plus 1. Since those are constant, this indicates that it must be a cubic polynomial function. So, how are we supposed to find that cubic function? The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use a matrix. Remember what Yoda said? Yeah, don't ask me to use his voice again. That was terrible. Okay, so uh, I need inputs and outputs. So the first one, the input, the x value is 1, the output is 1. Um, my x value is 2 for the second one, output is 4. 3 goes with 10, 4 goes with 20, and so on. Let me go to the next slide here so I have a little bit more room to write. Okay. Um, let's go back to red here. So basically, since this is cubic, I'm going to write my equation like this. ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d all of this is equal to y. Remember, the reason why I'm putting the y last is because that's how I'm going to insert this into the matrix, right? Okay, so uh, the first one, I'm going to stick in 1 for x, and what should come out is 1 for y. So I'll, I'll do the first one by hand, but the rest of them we'll just talk through, okay? Because you'll see what the pattern is, and it'll be pretty easy to do. So a times 1 cubed plus b times 1 squared plus c times 1 plus d, all of this is equal to 1 for the y value. So all of those 1s are just 1, no matter what their power is, so this equation becomes a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 1. Okay, for the next equation I'm going to input a 2 and what I should get out for y is a 4. So a times 2 cubed plus b times 2 squared, c times 2 plus d is equal to 4. 2 cubed is 8, 8a plus 2 squared 4, 4b plus 2c plus d is equal to 4. Now, I'm not going to write down all the steps for the next one. Maybe you see what the pattern is. You just, on the first one, you're, um, I'm cubing my number, squaring my number, 
raising it to the first power, and then d is the constant. The d will always be the same all the way down. Okay, so 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, and 2 to the first power is 2, and then I have my d. So for my next one, I'm plugging in 3. 3 to the third power is 27a, plus 3 squared is 9b, plus 3c, plus d is equal to 10. So the output should be 10 on that one. Last equation, because I have four parameters there, I've got a, b, c, and d, I need four equations in order to find them, so I need one more. I'm going to plug in 4 and get 20 as the answer. So 4 to the third power is 64a plus 4 squared 16b plus 4c plus d is equal to 20. So we're going to type all of this into the calculator as a matrix. What size matrix is that? How many rows do we need? One, two, three, four rows, and there are one, two, three, four, five. It's a four by five matrix. So we're going to type that into the matrix menu, and then I'm also going to, uh, like the math operation that it's going to do, remember is R, R, E, F, row reduce echelon form, and that'll put it all the way down to the final answer. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pause let you guys enter that into the calculator. It'll also give me a second to enter it as well. Pause. All right, so uh, let's say that I have my calculator pulled up here. And in order to put that thing in, um, I'm going to the matrix menu. So second, x negative 1 pulls up the matrix menu. You're scrolling over to edit. And uh, just put it under the first one there. It is a 4 by 5. And uh, type in your numbers as you see them. And now I want to call your attention to this nice neat pattern that happens here with this cubic. So in the cubic, if I look down in that column, I have 1, 8, 27, 64. Those are the cubic numbers, right? 1 to the first power, 2 to the, or 1 to the third power, 2 to the third power, 3 to the third power, and so on. If I look in the second column straight down, those are the squared numbers, because we're it's it's x squared. So 1, 4, 9, 16. And then on the third column, it's just the linear numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. The last column, uh, 1, actually the D column, I guess I should say, those numbers will always be a constant number 1, because so I'm, um, I'm not putting any number in for that. And then finally, the last column after the equal sign, there's where I have my numbers, 1, 4, 10, 20. Okay, so how do I get my answer from this? So let's quit back to the home screen. Second mode quits back to the home screen. Go back to the matrix menu. Second matrix. Scroll over to math, and it's that R R E F that you want. Keyboard shortcut is alpha B. Goes right straight to it. Inside the parentheses, you want to type the name of the matrix. You can't type it. You have to get it from the matrix menu, and it's A. You don't have to close parentheses, whatever. Save yourself a button press. All right, so I can see I've got some fractions in there, but watch this magic. We can go to math right there, turn it into a fraction, hit enter, hit enter one more time. There's some fractions. Uh, so from this, it says uh, in this matrix, the A value is equal to 1 6, the B value is equal to 1 half, the C value is 1 third, and then the D value is 1. We don't have to write it. So let's write our function then uh, in this form. Call up Zapina. There we go. So y was equal to 1 sixth x cubed. Pull that up one more time. Uh, they're all positive, okay? 1 half x squared plus, and then plus 1 third x. So here's the function. I guess I should have put f of x at the front of that. that that's going to be okay, though. All right. So now it's a chance for you to give this a try on your, on your own. So here is your set of, of, of values. Here's your sequence. Find the finite differences. Find out when they are constant. Is this thing going to be linear, 
quadratic, cubic, whatever. Once you decide that, then you're going to set yourself up a system of equations and solve that with a matrix. So go ahead and pause it, give that a try, and then come back. Check your answer. So, uh, which order finite difference did you get to be constant? Was it the first, the second, the third? Let's see. Well, it was the third, indicating that it was cubic. Now, this one may have thrown you at first because all of the values, uh, they, they weren't always increasing. So uh, it went up by 9, then went up by 7, then went up by, oh, it went down by 1, and then it went down by 15. So you still can do it exactly the same way. You, you still see what the differences are. So 15 minus 6, 22 minus 15, and so on. And then find the differences between those differences. And I can still see that it's constant. Negative 6, negative 6, negative 6. I wonder if that means something. Anyway, indicating that that's cubic. So we throw that stuff into the equation the ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, just the first four terms, put it into a matrix, perform some magic. So this is what it looks like whenever it comes out of that matrix, indicating the a is negative 1, the b is 5, and the c and d are also 1. So there's our, our function, f of x equals negative x cubed plus 5x squared plus x plus 1. It was a lot of fun. I, I hope you think so, too. So uh, let's check out Objective 2 now.